Hello everyone. On this video, we'll just be doing a few extra examples of antiderivatives and indefinite integrals. Alright, so let's say for example, you have the integral of negative 5x to the third power plus 4 times the fifth root of x. Uh, let me clean up that fifth root a little bit. And times the fifth root of x over 4x. Okay, and that's with respect to x. Okay, so with this one, once again, you can break it down to individual terms. Okay, so you have that one denominator, you can just separate that. So you have the integral of negative 5x to the third over 4x plus, oh, well, might as well, yeah, I'll do it this way. 4 times the fifth root of x over 4x with respect to x. I was going to skip a step, but I figured, nope, go ahead and just go all the way through so it makes sense to you. Okay, let me make that 5 a little smaller. There we go. All right, so remember, all you have to do is distribute your integration sign to both terms. So that will give you the integral of negative 5x to the third over 4x with respect to x plus the integral of 4 times the fifth root of x over 4x with respect to x. All right, now once you do that, you go ahead and simplify each term. Okay, so you have negative 5 over 4. Remember, that's a constant. So if you want, you can get that constant and just bring it out to the front. You have negative 5 over 4. You have x to the third divided by x to the first. Remember, that's just x squared. That's the integral of x squared with respect to x. Okay, plus, we can kind of simplify those two, okay, because we know that, we kind of do the work on the side here, the fifth root of x is just x to the one-fifth power. So what we have here is we have x to the one-fifth power divided by x to the first power. So you have x to the one-fifth power divided by x to the first power. And that is just equal to x to the one-fifth minus one power. Okay. So we have x to the one-fifth power minus, we'll make that 5 over 5. So you have x to the negative four-fifth power. Okay, so this will become, because your fours both cancel each other out, this would just become the integral of x to the negative four-fifth power with respect to x. Okay, so when you're given kind of a polynomial numerator with a monomial denominator, you can simplify it kind of like this. All right, so now we go ahead and integrate both of those. We have negative 5 over 4. The integral of x squared, remember that's x to the 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1. x to the power of 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1. Plus x to the negative 4 fifth power is x to the negative four-fifths plus one over negative four-fifths 
plus 1. Remember, this would have your plus C, and this would have a plus C. If you add those two plus Cs together, you get another constant, so that's just one big old happy plus C. All right, so if we go ahead and simplify each one of those terms even further, you have negative 5 over 4 times x to the third over 3 plus x to the negative 4 fifth power plus 1 is x to the positive 1 fifth. So you have x to the 1 fifth power over 1 fifth plus c. Okay, so if we go ahead and simplify those, you have negative 5 over 4 times 3, which is 12. So you have negative 5 over 12 times x to the third, plus if you multiply the numerator and denominator by 5 over 1, you get 5x to the 1 -fifth power plus c. All right, so if you are still writing, feel free to press pause, but we're going to go ahead and move on to a few more examples. Okay, so let's say, for example, we have the integral of 7 over x squared plus 1 with respect to x. All right, now this one, you go back a little bit to our first video. I have to kind of dig back in my papers a little bit. You bring that 7 out to the front, you have 7 times the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 with respect to x. Okay. Now the reason I was digging back to my paper is because I wanted to show you this. Alright, now if you remember back on the first video... The integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared with respect to x is equal to arctangent of x plus c. Okay, so here what you have is you have 7, the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared with respect to x is just equal to arctangent of x plus c. This is just your arctangent of x. Alright, so that one was pretty straightforward. Alright, so what about uh -oh, if you have the integral 10 times sine of x of a cosine squared of x with respect to x. Alright, so with this one, just going to tweak it a little bit. So, we're going to rewrite it. I'm just going to write down the original. 10 sine of x over cosine squared of x with respect to x. Now, cosine squared of x is just cosine of x times cosine of x. So we can get that. And that 10, we can bring that out to the front. So we have 10 times the integral sine of x over cosine of x times cosine of x with respect to x. All right, so now these two, we can go ahead and separate those. And that gives us 10 times the integral of 1 over cosine 
of x times sine of x over cosine of x with respect to x. All right, now how does that help us? Because we have 10 times the integral, 1 over cosine is secant. So you have secant of x times sine over cosine is tangent. Times tangent of x with respect to x. All right. So once again, going back to the paper or the notes that we had on the last video, we know that if we have the integral of secant and tangent, the integral of secant and tangent is secant of x plus c. Okay, so this is just secant of x. So this is 10 times secant of x plus c. All right, so if you are still writing, feel free to press pause, but we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next example. Okay, now this example will involve some initial conditions. We can solve initial conditions problems by solving for that very infamous plus C. Okay, now there's a reason that plus C is, I keep telling you how important that plus C is. This is why, because there are problems that revolve around that plus C. Okay, so let's say, for example, we want to solve the initial value problem The derivative of y with respect to x is equal to negative 5 secant squared of x minus 2. And let's say we know that y of 2 is equal to negative 1. Okay. Now this could be dy dx, this could be y prime of x, this could be f prime of x, it doesn't matter at all. This is just, this just happens to be the notation pick. So I don't want you to think it will always look like this. You could very well see a y prime of x or an r prime of x. All right, so we know that dy dx is just the derivative of y with respect to x. So that's going to equal, and that negative 5 secant squared of x minus 2. All right, so what do we do? We integrate both sides. Okay, we know that the derivative and integral will cancel each other out. So that leaves us with just y. Okay, so y equals negative 5 secant squared of x minus 2 with respect to x. All right, so we know that the integral of secant squared x is tangent x. So that tells us that y is equal to negative 5, and the integral of that, of secant squared x minus 2, oh, sorry about that, forgot my integral sign there, that is just going to be tangent of x minus 2 
plus C. Okay, because this is just tangent of X minus 2 once you integrate it. Let me clean up it. Look like it's a little bit fuzzy there. Ah, that's better. All right. So now, what do we do from here? Because we are not done yet. That's your integral right there. Okay, but we know that this is our initial condition. Okay, so we know that y of 2 is equal to negative 1. I know you're thinking, okay, that's all fine and dandy, but how does that help us? Okay, so that means that this, let's say you have your x1 and y1. This is your x1, and that's your y1, or your x and y value. Okay, so what do we do? We plug those into our y equals negative 5 tangent of x minus 2 plus c. Okay, so if we replace, uh oh, I forgot to make that y number 1. There we go. Alright, so if we plug that into that equation, our y, which is, our y number 1 is negative 1, so you have negative 1 is equal to negative 5 times the tangent of x1, just plug that in, so 2 minus 2 plus c. Alright, so what does that give us? That gives us negative 1 equals 5, negative 5, times tangent of 0, plus c. Now, tangent of 0 is just 0, so negative 5 times 0 is 0, so that disappears. Okay, so that leaves us with c is equal to negative 1. So now that we solve that, we just get our integral, and we replace the c with that negative 1. So that means that y is equal to negative 5 tangent of x minus 2 minus 1. Okay. So that's why that plus c is so important. Because a lot of the times you will have to solve for it. All right. So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our next example. Okay, so what if we wanted to solve the differential equation let's say for problem a we have h prime of t is equal to 8t to the third plus 5 where we know that h of 1 is equal to negative 4. And for problem b, what if we know that f double prime of x, or the second derivative of f of x, is equal to x to the power of negative 3 over 2. And f of 4, or f prime of 4, is equal to 2. And f of 0 is equal to 0.
All right, so whenever you have derivatives or second derivatives or third derivatives or fourth derivatives, it doesn't matter. Here's a hint that you can apply to any of them. To solve for the function <coughs> excuse me if you have a first derivative integrate once if you have a second derivative integrate twice and et cetera, et cetera, and so on. If you have a third derivative, integrate three times, and you keep on going. All right. So let's go ahead and solve for problem A. Okay. So for problem A, you have h prime of t is equal to 8t to the third plus 5. Okay, so what do we know? We know that h of t is equal to the integral of h prime of t with respect to t. Because the integral and the derivative will both cancel each other out. Alright, so that means our h of t is equal to the integral of our h prime of t. And our h prime of t is 8t to the third plus 5 with respect to t. All right. So we can go ahead and distribute our integral. So we have the integral. That 8, we're going to go ahead and bring that out to the front. 8t to the third with respect to t. Plus the integral of 5. We're going to bring that 5 out to the front. 5 with respect to t. Okay, so we know we have t to the third, so we raise that plus 1 and divide that plus 1. So you have 8 times t to the 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 plus 5. Remember when you have just a constant, the integral of a constant, that's just going to be, in this case, t. Okay, then you have plus c here and a plus c here. You add those two plus c's together, you still get a constant that we will call c. Or c number one and c number two, we'll just make that c. Okay, so if we go ahead and simplify this even more, that gives us eight times t to the fourth power over four plus five t plus c. Okay, so if we go ahead and simplify this all the way, we end up with h of t equals two t to the fourth plus five t plus c. Okay, so I'm just going to underline it. Okay, because now just the fact that we know from our question that h of 1 is equal to negative 4, we can solve for that c. Okay, so since h of 1 is equal to negative 4, that means that h of 1 is equal to 2 times 1 to the 4 plus 5 times 1 plus c, and we know that it equals to negative 4. All right, so really, if we just focus on this part, we can solve for our c. Okay, so 1 to the 4th is just 1, so that's 2 times 1, which is 2 plus 5 plus c equals negative 4. Okay, so you have 7 plus c. If we subtract 7 from both sides, 
And I'll put that underneath it. We have C is equal to negative 11. Okay, so we just get that C and plug it into there. So h of t is equal to 2t to the 4th plus 5t plus, well, minus 11, minus 11. Okay, and that is your original equation for, or original function for a. All right, so you are still writing. Feel free to press pause, but we're going to go ahead and do problem B on the next page. Okay, so for problem B, we have the second derivative of f equals to x to the negative 3 over 2, where we know that f prime of 4 is equal to 2, and f of 0 equals 0. Okay, so you know what, I'll tell you what, I want you to press pause, and I want you to go ahead and try this one on your own. Okay, remember when it's one derivative, you integrate once. When it's two derivatives, like this one, you integrate twice. All right, so I'm assuming you've pressed pause. You've tried to tackle this one on your own. So let's go ahead and verify your answer. Okay, so we know that if we integrate once, we'll get rid of one of those derivatives. So f prime of x is just equal to the integral of the second derivative of x with respect to x. So when these two cancel out, this integral will cancel out one of those derivatives. Okay, so our f prime of x is just going to equal the integral of our second derivative, which is x to the negative 3 over 2 with respect to x. So we know that this integral would just be x to the negative 3 over 2 plus 1 over 3 over 2 plus 1 plus c. Well, we'll call this c number 1 because we have to integrate twice. Okay, so once we go ahead and simplify all of that, this lets us know that our f prime of x will equal to negative 2x to the, oh, forgot my negative there, sorry about that, to the negative 1 half power plus our constant. Or, if you wanted to, you can write it as f prime of x is equal to negative 2 over square root of x plus our constant. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use that one because remember, we still know that f prime of 4 is equal to 2. Okay, so this is our f prime of x. So since f prime of 4 is equal to 2, using this one, we know f prime of 4 is equal to negative 2 over square root of 4 plus our constant. And we know that is equal to two. All right, so just using this portion, we know that negative two over square root of four is just negative two over two. Okay. Oh, that's right, we're just using the right side for this one. We have negative 2 over 2 plus C1 equals 2. Okay, so we have negative 1 plus C1 equals 2. If we add 1 to both sides, our C number 1 is equal to 3. Yeah, I'll just underline it instead of circling it. 
Okay, so that tells us that our f prime of x is equal to negative 2 over square root of x plus 3. All right, so we're halfway there. Remember, we still have that first derivative. That integration only knocked out one of those derivatives, so we have to do it a second time. All right, so let me go ahead and just make a little barrier there so it doesn't all flow together. Okay, so we know our f of x, because we want to get rid of that extra derivative, is equal to the integral of f prime of x with respect to x. Okay, so since this is our f prime of x, but since we're going to integrate, we're going to go ahead and change that to that one. Okay, so we know that our f of x will equal the integral negative 2 over square root of x plus 3. But we're going to go ahead and rewrite it as negative 2 times the integral of x to the negative 1 half dx, because remember, we'll go ahead and distribute that integral, plus 3 times the integral of dx. Okay, So all I did was, once I distributed the integration sign, that negative 2 over square root of x, I just rewrote it as negative 2 times x to the negative 1 half. That's what got me there. All right, so if we go ahead and integrate that one, you have negative 2, and the integral of x to the negative 1 half is x to the negative 1 half plus 1 over negative 1 half plus 1. Okay, plus the integral of 3 with respect to x is just 3x. Okay, so if you have a plus c1 number 1 here and a plus c number 2 here, add those together and you get your plus c. All right, so keep on going and simplify this. We end up with f of x equals negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half, so that will be 1 half times 2, so that would be negative 4 x to the positive one half plus three x plus c. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, so we have our f of x. All right, but if you look at your original problem, we know that f of zero is equal to zero. Okay, so since f of 0 is equal to 0, we know that f of 0 is equal to negative 4 times 0 to the 1 half power plus 3 times 0 plus c. We know that f of 0 equals 0, so f of 0 equals 0. And just focusing on that portion, we know that we have 0 plus 0 plus c equals 0. So that lets us know that c is equal to 0. So what does that tell us? That tells us that our f of x is equal to negative 4x to the 1 half power plus 3x plus 0 where you don't really have to put that zero there. And that gives you your final answer. All right. So hopefully this made sense, and I will see you on the next video.